the Independent National Electoral Commission may be under constraint to conduct the 2023 elections in over 686 communities under the atrocious activities of the armed non-state actors across the Federation. Now, findings have revealed that the affected communities and wards cut across 19 local government areas and 18 states of the Federation. President Mohamed Buhari had directed security agencies to ensure stability before December 31. Now, INEC had expressed grave concerns over the 2023 elections. However, security agencies had played down on the apprehension of the electoral umpire about the countries and safe terrorists or territories, I beg your pardon, for the conduct of the 2023 elections. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dennis Amakri, the former deputy director of the DSS. Mr. Amakri, so good to have you join us. Happy Independence Day, by the way. Yeah, happy Independence Day to Nigerians. Uh, yes. Good evening. Great. Um, this, this sounds more like, you know, we're beginning to sound like broken records because we know um, even during the 2019 elections, there were pockets of violence and, of course, terrorist activities in certain parts of the north. Um, but this, this time around, there seems to be more and more of these um, threats across the country. 18 local government areas of the country uh, calls for concern, doesn't it? Very, very. Because right now, you know, uh, we are going into the elections with... Um, some local governments still occupied by uh, terrorists. And then at the same time, um, the political actors are not helping issues. If you look at the security barometer for the 2023 elections, it looks like um, there is the possibility that we might have uh, pre-election violence um, and then, of course, post-election violence. The pre-election violence are already manifesting themselves right now, you know. But um, I, I hope that uh, we walk through it um, before the elections themselves. Why do you think that there will be pre-election violence? I mean, so far, um, what we see mostly is, you know, people who's showing solidarity for their party members. But then, does it also have to do with the rhetorics? Is it also how the party tickets have been aligned. What exactly informs that um, assertion of yours? Uh, we're very worried, uh, security-wise, we're very worried that um, there are a lot of um, threats, threats, either threats of assassination or threats of violence by different party supporters against other, their opponents and stuff like that. Um, uh, disallowing other parties to either campaign or do their rallies in uh, different places. Mm -hmm. And I, I think uh, that is a cause for concern because um, when we come to elections like this, the whole country is a playing field, mm -hmm. you know, and people should allow other people to go ahead, convince the public, and decide whether the public is going to follow you or not follow you, but don't use violence. I'm happy that uh, they have come to uh, the Abdul Salam Abubakar um, committee has uh, come to do the peace committee, uh, but they are also worried whether they are going to have uh, enforcement. Mm. They could sign, but the IGP has spoken, but are we really going to enforce it? But, I mean, is, is that a legal document? Because, again, you're talking about enforcement. Enforcement of, of something that's not legal? Because, again, many people ask, how binding is the peace accord? Many people who've signed these peace accords, and then half the time, their followers are the perpetrators of these acts of violence. We've seen many people being beaten and, you know, bloodied up because they supported a particular political party, and they were showing that support in a certain area, uh, and they got beat down. So, again... Um, how enforceable, really, is that particular peace um, uh, accord? No, it is like um, a contract between two companies. You know, we are going to carry out this contract uh, on, under these terms and conditions. And uh, if anybody falter, you know, then there will be consequences. And that is why the Inspector General of Police have come in. Because, yes, it's a peace accord, uh, it's a gentleman's agreement, 
But if uh, a particular party try to use violence and they are arrested, those people doing the violence are arrested, then, of course, uh, they have to be prosecuted, you know, and that is the enforcement you're asking for. Now, uh, many have also raised concern about the fact that this election might just be a watershed moment. Um, some people have even said that this will be a game changer. But then because of certain people who might want to grab power by any means, um, then, of course, there might, we might see a release of, you know, violence on even the voters, um, like what we saw some time ago. I think it was 2019 here in Lagos, um, some parts of Lagos. Um, yeah. How do we protect against those things, especially now that it seems that Nigerians are a bit more aware and more people want to show up to the polling units? How do we stop that voter apathy that might be playing out for good for those um, political actors who might be benefiting from it? Uh, for one thing, I can tell you that uh, the level of voter apathy uh, will be minimal. Will be minimal in this particular election because I think uh, the awareness is so high. The awareness is so high. Uh, Nigerians have passed, passed through the fire. So they are very, very much worried uh, about the future of the country. And uh, of course, the three major parties, the three major parties have come out to, you know, talk about what they can do to ameliorate that particular uh, situation. So uh, the voter party, uh, I don't think a lot of people will stay away. A lot of people want to go and vote and then see if their votes will count and if it will and it will count if they come out in mass because um, the first indication was uh, during the uh, registration of voters uh, people trying to get their PVC and then of course in the elections proper we expected that um, they will come out in mass and then of course vote for their preferred candidate and uh, let the country go forward because I can tell you Nigeria has been at the crossroads, and we cannot continue like this any longer. Let's talk about messaging before we wrap this up. Um, what role should political parties and even their candidates, who are ones who are speaking more often, what role should they play in making sure that the message of peace is spread abroad? And should they not necessarily also be held responsible for whatever form of violence breaks out? Especially, I, I, I want to underline again, the messaging that comes from these political parties, because we are used to the mudslinging and the dirty, you know, wild politics that we play in these parts. But can political parties not be held responsible, especially by security agencies? Of course, that is what I was saying. And, uh, you know, during the peace uh, meeting, the Inspector General of Police came out and then, of course, listed out a long list of offenses that can be committed by anybody. So we believe strongly, and I, I, I will, I will, I will, I will urge the Inspector General of Police and other security agencies to make sure that uh, they enforce it. Um, I don't want to see any of them being partial because this is the future of the country now, and they are not doing it for any party. They are not doing it for any particular person. Uh, this is for the future of the country, and they should be ready to enforce enforce those that are going to go against uh, those uh, peace uh, uh, peace uh, agreements. Agreement. So I, I believe strongly if uh, the police is serious, the security agencies are ready, um, we might be surprised to have a very peaceful election. I like the how you're using probability in every sentence. If the police is serious, we might be surprised. But then, what's the precedence that we can actually lay hold on and or hold off and say, well, this has happened before, so we can be trust uh, the police can be trustworthy enough for us to put our confidence in. If there's not been a precedence or um, you know something that the police has done before to not be biased or hold on to you know the peace message and enforce the fact that if you or your party or any member of your party talks or says anything that, you know, incites the public, then we will come after them. But if we haven't seen that, why should we trust that that magically would happen in 2023? Uh, the police, um, well, I believe that they are going to do their job 
Um, they have been uh, trying their best, but uh, we have a precedent. Uh, if you remember, uh, for all the elections that I have conducted, especially when I was in uh, service, that have uh, looked supervised, I, I discovered that, um, yes, most of them turn out to be peaceful, especially, you know, um, in the urban areas. But where we have uh, some very um, uh, violence uh, here and there, with local areas, uh, where we don't have a strong uh, uh, law enforcement presence, uh, people using masquerades to scare away uh, voters and stuff like that. Uh, but the major precedence that I think we should even think about is the election of uh, MK Abiola. You know, many people were very worried. A lot of Nigerians came out, stood in the sun and rain, and then voted, and there was no violence. And the result was uh, determined to be the fairest and freest election that Nigeria has ever had. So I hope, yeah, there is a possibility we can repeat that. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best and we keep spreading the message of peace. Well, Dennis Amakri is the former deputy director of the DSS uh, here in uh, Nigeria. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Well, that's it on the show tonight. But before I go, I would like to give you my take. Here's my take. Now, politics like the theory of evolution is a game of survival of the fittest. Now, standing for an election is not an easy thing to do, nor should it actually be. Now, in the pursuit of such power and influence, candidates must fortify themselves for the battles that must ultimately be waged. When seeking for the approval of others to say one must be thick-skinned is an understatement. It should come as no surprise the attacks and the ridicules that plague some of these candidates as knives come out. Our, polit our politics uh, may fall short of you know, the ideal campaigns conducted as the, a battle of ideas, but it certainly tests the mettle of these candidates. Even exceptional candidates with revolutionary ideas get beset by obstacles from even within their own parties. The popular opinion for such candidates is to fight on and not to give up until the very end. After all, we all can respect a candidate with a warrior's will. But at what point should such a candidate ask whether their candidacy does more harm than good? If the allies all stay and see the need, uh, well, if all the allies they need would rather fight for the opposition, I think that that's all our politicians need to do. Is your candidacy worth the blood of Nigerians? I'm Mary Anacom, thanking you for watching. Have a good evening.